morning. Oh, I jumped the gun here. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Wednesday, December 15th edition, halfway through, uh, did I say September? December. Oh my God, I'm losing it. December 15th edition of uh, the AM show, hosted live on Alpha Mint. I am R2DJ, joined with me as always by the man who swears he will not talk about lemons today, Mr. Free Market Capitalist. Hey, Lemon. I mean, hey, now. Hey, there it is. Broke it already. No. Um, yeah, we uh, we we discussed pre-show. We recognize that Lemons and uh, Clonex have been the talk of the town, especially in Alpha Mint for, you know, the past uh, past week or so. And uh, we would uh, would definitely steer the conversation in other directions simply because uh, we're just going to turn into a, a Lemon podcast at that point. So I'm not uh, against it, but I just I want to, you know, we should. Uh, well, hey, I mean, as long as we wrap up by 11, because we have the AM show that we're hosting on the uh, Lemon Discord after. Um, oh. <laughs> no, just kidding. <laughs> uh, okay, anyways. Oh, my God. We, we already blew it. We're already talking about it. This I, is, Jesus. Uh, yeah, right. we, we suck. Um, how was your day yesterday? What was, uh, what was going on with you? Uh, day was fabulous. It was just quite a busy day. I mean, Clonex hitting a peak, the nice, the Nike news really uh, unfolding nicely for the market. It does not seem to be some quick pop and give back. And I think the trickle down effect of literally making these entire these OGs making their entire career uh, in one fell swoop is just going to rain down on top of this NFT market in a way we've never seen. I'm, I'm excited. Yeah, it definitely opens the gate for uh, for new money to to come in and come check it out. Uh, you know, a lot of the sneakerheads uh, probably already got in through Top Shot and NFT trading. But for anyone lingering or anybody that had any doubt, uh, like we've mentioned a plenty of times before, it's uh, it's a legitimizing process, right? Like there's a comfortability with um, with uh, you know these big brands opting into the space and participating in it so yeah i mean it it feels good it feels ripe and it feels like we're uh you know maybe gonna be seeing a lot of new entrants into it and uh you know if we can parlay that with coinbase's nft marketplace um that will uh you know should should keep the ball rolling pretty well um, yeah i mean they they keep coming out with new announcements every day about who's being added to the roster. I believe yesterday the big news, um, now it's slipping my mind. It's right in whale watching. Who was it? Did you see it yesterday? Um, uh, big one was just added to Coinbase. I'll get it up quick. Go ahead. Keep talking. I'll find it. Yeah, no. Uh, speaking of Coinbase, it was Cash pretty... Mask. Cash mask. Cash mask. Sorry. Okay. This was a big, I just want to mention this quick because before the last bear market in February, hash masks was one of the more promising projects that a lot of people thought was going to be like almost the next punks. And then it ran into the bear, died on the vine. Yesterday, they were announced uh, as a partner for Coinbase. So I'm going to drop that link for everyone. It's not a cheap collection, but that was uh, really interesting. So, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, speaking of Coinbase, and we'll t- I guess just might as well talk about crypto at the same time, but uh, uh, Coinbase had a hilarious um, little mishap with uh, with whatever was tracking their prices, and everything was inflated by uh, 10,000, 100,000 times the actual uh, value of it to the point where um, crypto Twitter went absolutely nuts. And uh, yeah, so I mean, like Ethereum was at like 400,000 X or Ripple, like what? XRP was at 22. What? What's that? 400,000 Ethereum is FUD. Okay. Oh, FUD. I thought you said bud. I'm like, yeah, bud. What's up, bud? Um, <laughs> no, yeah, like Ripple was at a hilarious um, one quadrillion dollar market cap. And uh, I know there were people that definitely logged into their Coinbase and had that immediate like, oh, fuck yeah. Um, it, you know, it's happening moment. But uh, yeah, it, it wasn't score. meant to last. BitClout, or DSO as it's known now, is up 78.5 million percent at one point during the day. Um, and just for perspective, it was up about 78 percent yesterday. So this glitch from Coinbase was a million X error on most. Yeah, and for a brief period of time, we were all BitClout maxis once again. <laughs> and billionaires. <laughs> I, 
you know, it was nice being a billionaire for a brief minute. I'm curious to see what would have happened to inflation had uh, <laughs> six million billionaires been created overnight. Uh, prices may have gone up today. Yeah, yeah no kidding. Um, I, I, and I mean, had that immediate like seeing that spike up and then spike down. I uh, had that uh, meme like, I will never financially recover from this. <laughs> <laughs> Just not going to feel no, the same won't. ever. <laughs> I hate to break it to everyone in the audience. We've all that was peaked. The peak all time high. Yeah, you will never be worth You're never hitting it again. And uh, it was fun while it lasted. Hopefully, yeah. we can get somewhat back. Yeah, I, uh, I took out as much uh, leveraged loans as I could and uh, immediately got liquidated. <laughs> yeah. yeah uh, but uh, but yeah, on the on the topic of crypto, Bitcoin chilling around 47 and a half. Ethereum hanging around 3,800. They're kind of just going sideways uh solana still quite down on the week but you know it's one of the few green ones avax is actually having a decent day at 12 percent um and the aforementioned uh deso with the announcement that it's going to be listing on coinbase is actually doing pretty well up uh 70 percent on the week um, if you guys don't know alpha mint uh was created within the right, hallowed yeah. wall of BitCloud, and originally you had to buy a creator coin uh to have access to alpha mint so DSO has a special place in our hearts, and it is good to see it up a hundred percent today. I I think I I think now I'm starting to forget that we have so many new members out of that core yeah. group that we kind of started with. That uh, yeah, this was uh this was originally a BitClout or DSO uh project, and uh, that's how the majority of us met. Um, in free market and myself go go way back on there. So yeah, um, don't have to talk too much about that, but uh, yeah. Feels like it was forever ago, but a mere nine months ago. Um, let's look at some news. Uh, crypto firm Ledin, uh, that's the worst name ever, raises uh, $70 million for Bitcoin-backed mortgages. Crypto savings and loan platform is preparing the world's first Bitcoin-backed mortgage offering after raising $70 million. Uh, I, I mean, this is something that I don't think is like moving the needle a crazy amount or whatever, but it is like, a, it does feel like a step in the right direction. Um, as somebody who's gone through the housing purchase process, it really, they do not give two flying fucks about how much money you have in your crypto portfolio. Uh, like it's just a, a scratch it off the list. So it's interesting to see that, um, we're, we're getting towards this. Like, I don't think I would actually be backing my mortgage in, uh, in Bit uh, Bitcoin anyways, uh, right now. But, um, I mean, that's the goal. That's the ultimate goal is to be this, uh, an asset that's respected enough and uh, trusted enough within the financial institutions that you can actually borrow properly against it. In the year 2029, when every asset you hold dear and love starts plummeting towards zero faster than you can click your mouse, we will look back on, on this moment today. <laughs> uh, yeah, for those that don't know, Free Market has a pretty hard date set in, in, in stone for, uh, for 2029, but that might be a, um, a topic for an, another day. This is harmonics and wave theory, which is the world that I come from in, in futures and well, the I guess it's a topic for today. I, we will, yeah, we will, we will talk about it as we inch closer, but we have many years of fun ahead of us. So, you know, party. There we go. Yeah, many, many years of fun before Max Payne. Um, we'll move on from that. Uh, this is something that I just brought up because I thought it was interesting. You mentioned it the other day when we were talking about uh, Congress having the meeting with the crypto CEOs that went surprisingly well. Uh, you know, they they spoke about it favorably. They were asking good questions, and there was actually a quite a productive conversation around crypto in Congress, which was you know uh, dramatic pause a shock um but yeah this article is uh crypto in congress five members have invested and so have many staffers and now that last part of it was uh was what i wanted to touch on with you because i think you uh you hit that on the 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 head is that there's staffers there's interns there's younger people that are, are moving their way through up through the uh the political uh scene in washington and they do have influence amongst their the the people that they work for. You know, they talk about it. They're they're excited. They're rabid to share it with people. And uh, you know, we might be seeing the um, the after effects of 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 said uh, staffers. They are treating us like children or like a criminal in an interrogation chair. This is the most obvious good cop bad cop I have ever seen in my life. One day it's come. We love you. Sit down. We have great questions for you. The next day it's jail. Jail now!
So <laughs> I, I see what's going on here, but I, I guess the good hearings are heartening, right? No, I mean, it's, you know, uh, America seems to be maybe kind of getting there. I mean, you know, between all of the uh, the battles between Elon Musk and the, the Democratic senators and talking about, all, you know, just uh, flinging poo on Twitter and stuff like that. Um, very quietly, it just seems to be that the uh, the situation is brewing in favor of of crypto, kind of under the scenes, which is which is good. I mean, I I know that there's a lot of people that are worried that uh, stifling innovation is going to be is going to be a tough look for America, who's always been on the forefront of it. Um, and you know, the, I I like seeing these headlines as much as I Bonk. like seeing the other ones too. <laughs> Bonk! You go to Quantum Domino. Oh, messed that joke. Let's move on. Uh, yeah, and, well, and again, and in, in other news, and I'm going to bring this up again, and not for redundancy's sake, but because it's actually starting to to pop up quite a bit. But UK watchdog bans Coinbase, Papa John's, and eToro crypto ads. Um, UK's Advertising Standards Authority has banned a total of seven crypto-related ads as a matter of priority. Um, I've mentioned the UK a bunch of times in the past about like, oh, this is fun. Like the uh, the old white Brits are getting worried about crypto like good sign um but it's starting to become a daily thing where they're really starting to clamp down on it and i'm i'm, I'm actually starting to get interested in, in what's happening over there uh because it seems to be going beyond like just uh we're scared please don't buy crypto and the article that i referenced yesterday also had it that they were worried that um you know the average person on total has 0.1% of their entire portfolio allocated into crypto. So when you average it out over everybody's investments is 0.1% and that's what they're worried about. But uh yeah, they're 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 actually really starting to seem like they're getting into the fight phase of this. The greatest financial scandal of our lifetimes and maybe in history uh happened while we were alive and I bet not one person in the audience could name it. And that would be the LIBOR rigging scandal. If you guys don't know what the overnight interbank lending rate is, it's basically what all interest rates, whether it's a private company or, or a corporation or bank in the world, bases their loan rates on. And that was being rigged by people at the Bank of England uh, for, I, you know, <laughs> decades. And... Just manipulating LIBOR by 10 basis points could have brought trillions into, you know, the entities that were manipulating it. England controls a lot more than we think, and I am not surprised, given that they control LIBOR, that they see this threat. Yeah, they're, yeah, yep. Yeah, it's, um... I mean, they, they've long been a, uh, a bastion of financial stability, right? Like the, the British pound. I mean, the pound. Is, is, yeah, uh, the pound it, was the original reserve currencies. Yeah, and, uh, you know, they, they rejected uh, joining in with the euro um, because of the, the strength of it and, and whatnot. So, I mean, this is a, this is a big, big player in the, uh, the global financial scene. And, uh, yeah, the, best, the best scams are the ones that are so complicated, even when you get caught and they put them on the news, nobody cares because they don't understand them. <laughs> and that's why the LIBOR rigging scandal was so brilliant. And to this day, it's the largest heist ever in a financial system, and most people don't even know it happened. I had no idea, so I appreciate that. Uh, the, the little lesson there. Um, okay, let's move on from there. We'll get into NFTs now. WGMI, uh, nothing crazy going on. And uh, I just wanted to bring up the fact that uh, Chromey Squiggles uh, is maybe uh, seeing the bottom get priced in. Um, yesterday, the floor dropped as low as 4.5. Uh, it was about six, uh, seven days ago, and it's bounced back up to 6.25 now. So having a nice little one day change, um, the seven day is starting to kind of trend up. The 30 day is still down a little bit down from 7.4, but, uh, you know, it's, 
you're you you are one that's always talking about generative art and art blocks um you know maybe being a buy right now just because of of how how far it's fallen but the uh you know how important their legacy is to nfts and uh you know i'm wondering if maybe we're starting to see the bottom get priced in here um i've been in nfts for almost three years but it was really discovering art blocks in january and generative art that made me kind of want to devote my whole life to it and it's been obviously since the blow off top in august uh has been quite the bear market with most collections down almost 80 percent except for the grails and i mentioned it about a week ago i do think art blocks has bottomed and Squigs is an example of what a, a, a part of their curated collection I think is going to be the next Fidenza or Ringers. I am super bullish on Squigs. It's one of my favorite projects of all time. And I do think Art Blocks is bottomed. Obviously, this is like for whales and people with insane liquidity because these are very high priced. But I do think generative art, while it may not be near its next gigantic leg up it's bottomed and if you can start shopping and you know spamming weth offers i would yeah i mean they they do look great and there's lots of great uh generative art out there that's uh ripe for the picking it just remains to be seen uh if and when they actually have their moment again i gotta believe it's a matter of when uh, but right now we're in this phase where everybody's seeking utility, you know, when coin, when roadmap, when game, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, yeah, I mean, they've been they've been pushed by the wayside. We had the bull or the sorry, the bear market that uh, hit them pretty hard, too. But um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I got to believe that it's going to uh, spin back around and it could be sooner than later. The short sightedness of participants in this market is your opportunity if you're willing to think out, you know, more than a few weeks. Yeah, for sure. Uh, let's talk Cyber Kongs. They uh, they minted their last um, Kongs baby yesterday, and uh, baby and, and Kong. yeah, the baby Kong is uh, the, so the breeding phase of the Cyber Kongs um, platform or ecosystem is is now over, and uh, there's going to be a lot of people looking towards uh, what's next for Cyber Kongs. They've often been a leader in terms of uh, the meta shifts in, in, in terms of having, you know, a coin, a token, a, the breeding process, et cetera, et cetera. So what's your, what are your thoughts on this? Where does it go? Um, and uh, what's next for Cyber Kongs? Well, talk about when utility, I, I would argue this is one of the larger things too. It's amazing how many big things have happened in the NFT market in just the last week. I do not want to undersell how important I think minting this last Cyber Kongs baby was. We already know the force that Wall Street Kongs and the Kongs incubator is within the NFT space. Um, but it, we were just talking about how every everyone now is when token, when utility, it's the current meta. And this was all based off CyberCon. They created this idea of a roadmap. You know, if Artifact invented utility, CyberCon's invented the roadmap. And every project has, you know, either been inspired by or directly copied the Kong's model. And that's because it's a great model that people love. But man, are we excited to see what Cyber Kongs have next? Because they're not being quiet and like, uh oh, the last baby was minted. Are we ready to do our things? I think they've been ready for weeks. Uh, they were hinting that the next big thing is coming. And I think this is the, the entire NFT world is, is going to be watching this. I mean, when we talk about the Cyber Kongs collection as a whole, I am extremely bullish. I was bullish on it before. I am bullish on it now. That supply will not be growing at all. A baby Kong gets you into those alpha channels. And to me, that is worth the price of admission, especially here at 6E, where they're sitting right now. The the 5,000th uh, baby Kong, the incubator, was bought by an Axie whale um, who will not turn it into a baby Kong. I loved this. Um, it's number 5,000. It is historic as far as uh, it being the last incubator. And I love the idea that he's not going to uh, reveal the baby. It itself is a fabulous piece. I love the Kong's incubators, the way they look. And it would be great if a few of those just were around forever, just to represent you know, the phase that they came from and the meta they invented. 
So I think this has ramifications for the collection, which I expect to be bottom left to top right over time. Uh, and it has ramifications for the overall market as pretty much every project you know and love is going to look to them uh, to take the leap. Yeah, I'm just looking at uh, CyberKongs right now on OpenSea. I mean, they've had their ups and downs, um, but the incubators uh, right now, there's 323 of them left. And as you said, 5,000, I guess, is the intention will stay an incubator. Um, but yeah, 323 of them left in the floor of 10 ETH, which is uh, is pretty curious. Uh, seems to be, well, you know. It, it's very similar to Clonex, right? Yeah, I was literally I mean, just going to say it. It seems like yeah, there's yeah, that yeah. parody of like the incubators or the the vials are are two x the floor of uh, of what they produce. Um, so They're a lottery, I, baby. I wonder if that's like some kind of just market standard uh, uh, price. Um, you know, uh, I, it's very efficient when you think about yeah, it, right? Yeah. You, you if you price in what a rare baby Kong will get you, you're paying a premium for that chance. And, you know, wealthy or very liquid people are definitely willing to bet on that. So I, I am so curious to see what Cyber Kongs does next. I love this collection. A cheap entry into Cyber Kongs are their VX, um, but that won't get you in the alpha rooms. And the big news I think that is really interesting is they're going to be announcing utility for baby Kongs. Now, I don't know if that's going to be something like maybe one banana a day, right? We all know that the Genesis Kongs earn 10. They're the only ones that earn bananas and could currently make babies up until this point. So I am, I am watching this one closely. Huge congratulations to that collection. Uh, an obvious blue chip, an obvious trendsetter uh, in this market. Yep, and uh, you know they've 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 had some incredible peaks too. Like I was looking at some of the last sales on the, uh, or sorry, the highest last sales on the on the Kongs, right? And we've seen them go for as high as uh, two hundred, a couple sales of uh, above two hundred ETH. Um, so I mean, these are definitely a, a predominant blue chip. Uh, yeah, they uh, were they were at sixteen uh, before the pullback, so they're definitely still sixty six percent off the uh, the frothy highs that they were at. So that you know, take that into consideration if you're shopping. Yeah, they were. Um, well, I mean, they're also hit hit the bear market and uh, um, were inflating their supply with uh with more of babies so that you know that was it's it's almost like the uh the kaijus where you know the the floor was dropping but not uh not, maybe not as dramatically as it looked but uh yeah yeah sorry my dog was just making some weird sounds in the background and wanted to make sure that he was okay um but he's, Pay he's attention to me dad seems to be alive and breathing so that's good news on the uh the dog front over here uh let's let's uh let's let's get into pepsi uh pepsi's drop yesterday actually finally happened um there was a lot of frustration over the waitlist process that uh that took place earlier in the week or i guess late last week where you know they just put a tweet up and it was a form to fill out it got Botted to the point of like actually being sold out or or placed people on the wait list seven minutes before the post actually went live. Um, I'm not quite sure if they ended up course correcting that whole situation, uh, but the drop did happen. Uh, it did hit open C. They do look good, and the price action was wild. I you know I, I know it got up to. Uh, around three ETH, there were some moon loungers that managed to get it on the wait list. I know some bought up on the secondary, uh, and uh, yeah, it was uh, it was a pretty dramatic rise and fall yesterday. Uh, once once that hit the uh, the secondary market, yeah, yeah, it was it was pretty intense. Um, yes, uh, I so <laughs> I, okay, so I, I just wanted. My main thing with these big drops, right, is there's so many eyes on them and so many people who are new to NFT. So in the in the methods that we've seen these drop and we've seen a few different, the ones I'm really a fan of are the stealth drops. OK, when you're a Pepsi, when you're a bud, when you're an NFL, you do not need to tell anybody. I mean, just look at the alpha. Just look at the moon lounge. If anything like this drops, it's in there within a few minutes. You know, people are watching Moby. People are watching Twitter. It's it, 
there's no reason when you have as much exposure as a company like Pepsi to do some sort of grandstanding internet engagement based form or something like that. Cause we all know these things are either going to get botted or people that feel like they did everything correctly and still don't get them are going to feel scorned. When you do a stealth mint, it's just, it's fun. Everyone's racing, everyone's trying. And then if you yeah. don't get one, it was like, oh, I lost the race. It doesn't feel like the company set you up to fail. Yeah, it was, it, it turns more into like, damn, I wish I was at my computer for that. Or like, you know, right. it's not, it's not anybody's fault. It just happened and you were either there yeah. and were able to or weren't, right? The Budweiser one yeah. was okay for that. The NFL one, the first NFL one that happened was, was great for that. They just put it out there and, uh, Things went yeah. crazy oh, in, yeah. in terms of uh, the dollar values skyrocketing. But yeah, sitting on a 0.8 floor right now, there were some bigger sales, uh, some kind of hitting as high as 10 ETH. I'm um, looking at it four or five, uh, a little bit in the six range there. So it was pretty interesting. Um, this is like pure Americana collectors items. Like this is uh, definitely high up on the list uh not maybe not quite on the uh the coca-cola polar bears kind of level but uh yeah pepsi is a one of the biggest most recognizable brands in the planet and uh dropping a pretty low supply um first iteration of an nft is uh it's kind of cool to see them do i know that there's sometimes some mixed feelings about these big corporations getting in there and participating but for them this isn't about you know making money this was a free mint and um you know, it paid off very well for some traders. Uh, there's going to be some pretty satisfied collectors that are going to get to add this to uh, to their, um, you know, their 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 gallery. And uh, yeah, I, I I don't know. I just see this stuff as a win for for most parties involved. Yeah, I love these mainstream drops. Uh, I just think, look, if you're a Fortune 500 uh, CEO, and I know a lot of them listen to our replay and a few of them live, just think about a stealth drop. I think it's better for your customers and, and a much better entry into the NFT world. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, you, you've got Keith listening to this every day, right? Every day. Every day, yeah. <laughs> uh, amazing. Well, uh, good morning, Keith. Uh, we're happy to have you as part of the audience. So, uh, Hello, homie. <laughs> uh, let's talk about another drop that was pretty crazy yesterday. The pre-sale happened on the weekend. The live mint happened yesterday for the public sale. My Pet Hooligans. Uh, this was a, a pretty big gas war. People were trying to, to bought it. I think there was only 400 left in the collection after the sale if i get that correct but um yeah it was up to a 0.7 floor pre-reveal and pre-public sale it has since gone back to a 0.5 floor uh we've had some pretty mixed feelings about my pet hooligan but if i'm gonna get over the salt that i have for it i gotta say um you know dropping in short succession from clone x being you know, very high quality 3D art. These are professional artists and animators that have done some pretty big work uh, that that are have made these, uh, you know, metaverse characters. They do look really good. And uh, I think the timing for them to drop this might have been perfect as, you know, people are, are, are maybe searching for, the, um, you know, a substitute for Clonex. The Clonex is priced out for probably the vast majority of the market, if I'm being honest with you. And uh, this this looks to be a good alternative. I mean, I've I've seen this so many times in markets now. Everybody calling 3D dead. Nobody likes 3D, blah, blah, blah. When you start to hear universal consensus around extreme ideas like that, it's a bottom. And I mean, I saw it happening. I knew it was going to turn around and 3D is becoming trendy now. I do believe it's a response to Clonex. These are going to become fashion statements. I pounded the damn table on it and people want to flex. I mean, these are going to be a new flex. People want 3D. And speaking of shout out to the croaks collection yesterday which is stunning oh I mean, those man, revealed too right yeah and everyone i saw was just next level i mean there was an astronaut one that oh, broke the mold i i'm in love with this collection it's it's pricey i think they are around 0.5 right now but they look seeing, great seeing the floor at 0.23 and i just pulled that up and oh. thought ha huh, that might seem like a buy Honestly, I, I mean, I don't know. You know, it's it's very hard to say. They had a bit of a weird launch. I know that a bunch of crypt codes 
were able to mint a lot more than they were supposed to. I guess the contract yeah, had a small flaw like that. Now, these are cryptodes holders, okay? These aren't like your classic, classic flippers. I'm, I'm not saying they're not going to dump some on the floor, but it, there was a bit going on here that I think some people had a, a bad taste in their mouth with Croak. So I don't know about the instant price action. Just go look at these things. If you don't want one of these, you know, I, they look great. Yeah, these are not a thrown together derivative. Oh, some of these uh the matrix backgrounds look really good. Oh. Uh yeah, th this is a this is high quality um high quality 3D rendered PFPs and uh damn, I might actually after the show take a serious <laughs> look at these because uh I didn't actually get a chance to look at the collection before talking about this as uh OpenSea was a uh, not being my friend, but they uh, at least the uh, the rarer traits seem to be pretty good. I'm trying to get more into the commons and see what they look like, but uh, yeah, it's um, it, I, I'm seeing this at a point two three floor, and I, I just uh, maybe it's a higher supply, but uh, I've I've definitely seen worse projects do what <laughs> do, are they do better. Hmm? What's the supply? Yeah, seven thousand. Okay. Yeah, seven thousand. So, okay. um, no, they 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 look pretty good cool i'm gonna have to dig into this a little bit more so uh yeah keep an eye out for my pet hooligans we're gonna be uh you know watching the the reveal pretty closely and uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens with croaks after the fact um one more topic to get into i think before and uh we're only really gonna touch on it but before we do the q a so if anyone wants to start throwing their hands up to come up on the stage and chat with us. You can do that now, but um, for anybody that still managed to diamond hand the fuck out of their 888 inner circle passes, uh, there might be, might be, might be a little bit of light at the t end of the tunnel for, uh, for you guys. I was a former 888 holder. It was uh, frustrating to say the least watching it go from, you know, uh, mint price uh, all the way up to three ETH and then uh, promptly back down. Uh, it felt like it was full of broken promises, false claims, a lot of, uh, you know, disingenuous hype. Um, and, you know, a lot of people have exited since then. But, uh, you know, if you're still holding and you have conviction in, in 888, the person, then uh, that's great for you. It's not a fud thing, but it was a little, little, little bit much for my tolerance in the, in the end of it. But uh, you know, they they did announce that there's the uh, a drop with a BT drop that is uh, doing a Dutch auction that's starting at eleven ETH um, and going from there. It's a, a music based drop. I got to do a little bit more research on it um, as time was time has been of the essence. But uh, the the Dutch auction is starting at eleven. But 888 holders have the opportunity to burn three of their 888 passes and get one of these. So yeah. there's an interesting dynamic here. And this is probably one of the more interesting things I've seen, um, you know, these passes used for. Obviously, 11 ETH is incredibly high to start a Dutch auction for almost anyone. Um, you know, maybe like a, a Beeple aside, but... Uh, you know, there's there's a huge uh, there's a huge like game theory proposition here because the value of eight 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 has uh, increased from about point four point three floor all the way up to I saw it get as high as point one one point four yesterday. It's kind of chilling out at one point two right now. Um, so as the value of these start to to shoot up on these announcements, you got to kind of weigh like, is it just going to be cheaper <laughs> to sell these and buy on the Dutch auction? Um, do you take that risk? Because, you know, once you decide to go one way or the other, you're kind of stuck into that place. So I think that this is going to be fascinating to watch. Um, it's nice to see that the people that have been holding 888s might actually uh, get 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 something out of this at the end of it. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's still pretty valuable from the mint price. But uh, when I say broken promises, you know, there's a, a cool cats drop that was announced months and months ago that is still yet to come to fruition. Uh, the Jason Seif drop looked like it was going to be pretty cool, and it literally ended up being a collection of rugs. Um, so the irony is, uh, you know, not lost on me there. But uh, you got any any um, any thoughts on this? You know, you started well, the uh, the this. famous Alpha Mint take the free three ETH. Well, let's look at this from two perspectives. Okay, any 
flack that 888 has gotten over these few months since he started this program has been his own doing. You know, it's it's the promises and the we're going to all be wealthy and I'm, you know, it's going to 8.88 and all that stuff is why he's getting the amount of pushback he's getting right now. Now, if we look at it from another perspective, this thing's a few months old, you know, give people a chance to work. These uh, the NFT community is all when, when, when. And I'm not saying the NFT community needs to change, but when you run a project, you need to be cognizant (laughs) of this, that anything you say is going to be expected next week, you need to deliver on it. And this has been 888's folly the whole time. And I... I, I have been bearish on 888 for reasons other than what I just said, just because whatever, who cares? I don't want to fud anyone's bags. I just think that now you obviously, I think it's kind of brilliant, the game theory position you've been put in, because let's say 888 can get another drop like this in the future. Is the pass itself worth more than burning it for this thing right now? Well, I think it's going to be a pretty even split between people who do it, because I think there's a lot of disgusted people who just want out and will use this as their opportunity. And I think there's a lot of people who still believe in 888 and power to them, like, you know, expecting these people to deliver constant, constant positive EV to you on a regular basis the way people have was a pipe dream. They should have never promised it, but you shouldn't believe it either. I, I think it's just when when you're talking the way that he did, it's hard one not to buy into it because he's got that very infectious enthusiasm, and yeah. uh, you know he didn't set the expectations properly, and I think it left that sour taste in a lot of people's mouths. You know, it's like setting expectations, um, especially when you're you know managing a a community or a um, a product or whatever. Like setting the expectations for it is incredibly important. Um, and you know, he, let's not forget that he literally started this off by host, you know, holding a, um, um, almost like a pool to say, you know, predict the date and time at which the 888 pass will hit 8.88 ETH and I'll give you $888,888, right? Like you're literally trying to drum up this, like, you know, oh my God, you know, predict, predict when this thing's going to be worth 40, $50,000. It's uh, I, I that don't know. That is proficiency. And that's the, that's one reason I've been so bearish on it. The guy is a marketer. The guy is an influencer. And that look, that's a very, there is a core competency there. I'm not going to knock, but is it curating NFTs for a large, large group of people? I don't know. I just don't think that you can you can drum up a sense of urgency in in owning and participating in this and then not follow through on that urgency by having immediate things to back it up right like we are um three three and a half months since this thing dropped if i can recall correctly and there's been almost nothing substantial of it and like there's been a couple of whitelist draws that most people didn't get a chance of for like things like grills crypto grills or whatever like it's you know it's it's been the the hype that he's manufactured hasn't been matched with the quality of of uh products that they've dropped you know like and they dropped a eight tier um sneaky vampire syndicate anyways we can we can talk about all of the the missteps that we want um but this is a big partnership this is a you know a um grammy nominated uh sound uh engineer he has almost uh he has over 600,000 followers on twitter not sure that most of them are crypto native in fact i would be willing to bet most of them aren't um but this is a partnership in with him 888 and gala games so uh yeah i mean i, I think this might be a, a bit of a game changer for 888 pass holders and it's definitely something to to uh to keep an eye out i mean i'm not saying that you know 888 passes are a buy right now but um um you know congrats to anybody that's continued to hold them you might get something good out of it here i hope they moon i got so many homies in it i have yeah, nothing sure. against, i have nothing against 888 uh i hope i hope they moon yeah and now that mars is out of gatorade we should be uh good to go <laughs>
<laughs> oh, I, I, I literally, you know what my brain did? My brain went, you mean the chocolate bar company owns Gatorade? <laughs> and did that and they're dropping an NFT. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be first in line. Yeah. <laughs> the Gatorade and Mars. Man, Mars chocolate bars is like a no brainer. Like we're going to Mars, oh. baby. Right? Oh my God. Come on. In White Castle. Tell your friend. <laughs> Venom. Yeah, the invite has been sent. <laughs> GM, GM, my friend. Good morning, guys. How are you doing? Great. How are you doing today? Sure. I want to hear about 888 from an inner an inner circle member. Tell us your... I, actually, us. I just really want, want to point out, you have the Malavita circle around your profile picture that is animated. It looks great when you talk. Um, and that was the first thing that 888 dropped. And it was actually kind of cool because they they found like this like way to be PFPable without you know, obstructing people's normal, you know, PFP avatar. So I, I actually thought that was the f the first thing that they did was kind of cool. It was, uh, it was Brilliant. definitely unique. Yeah. Good marketing. Yeah, no, for sure. And I mean, I've talked with free market a little bit about this in private. I've potentially may have drank a little bit too much of 888's Kool-Aid myself, but, uh, you know, I'm inner eight, I'm an inner eight member. So I hold more eight, uh, plus passes. And and for me, on a monthly basis, the utility has been pretty great. Um, and that's kind of where the FUD came from, to be honest, is he should have just done 888 passes. He shouldn't have done 8,888 yeah. passes. That was that was a, a, a fatal flaw for the beginnings of his networking. Um, and it caused a lot of people that were there to just mint or did catch it at point two to, you know, really be like, well, where's the utility? Where's the utility? And and I mean, the, the guy is obviously extremely well off. Uh, we, we were joking about him. He has 111 Clonex vials. <laughs> yes. Wow. Like, so, so like just put put that just that just that one bag. I don't want to know what the floor is. Don't tell me, but yeah. yeah probably 15 ETH. So I just, <laughs> do, go ahead and do that math. I mean, he's a very substantially well-off guy. I yeah. think that whatever he's trying to build is extremely ambitious, and it's not really for the when, 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 whens. What's great about this whole new realms thing and these partnerships is pretty much for a week, a week straight, all the flippers and all the people kind of get a chance to get out, you know, and um, it's it's kind of um, a, a good thing uh, for the whole ecology of this situation. Gala Games is huge. I'm hoping to see like a Wilder World, like if 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 Wilder World is one of the Realm Guardians or like, I mean, there could be huge announcements coming. I mean, and there's one every day. Um, I think that those bags are going to continue to pump. But yeah, from a, from like a utility perspective, on a monthly basis. Um, you know, the littles, I got whitelisted wow. psychedelics, psychedelics anonymous. Wow. Um, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that I'm pretty much guaranteed because of the amount of passes I hold. So that's something that is that I, that I can count on, on a monthly basis to say, okay, well, 888 is going to, you know, and, and I will say the beginning drops, how Jason safe went, how sad fire, uh, sad vampire syndicate went. Yeah, it was, it wasn't, uh, super palatable. And I think that a lot of the, you know, he had to kind of work through like the burns and, you know, it, um, making things uh, burnable. And, and you know, I, I just don't, you know, I get the FUD from flipper from a flipper perspective, but from a, I minted eight of these for 0 0.08. <laughs> and I'm and like, dude, I they could go to like 0 0.08 again, and I would let him bring me as much utility as possible. So it's kind yeah, of tough, I'm, right? It, you guys buy in. If you bought the inner eight circle, uh, inner eight at at the peak, it was over a hundred thousand dollar membership. Like, right. I, I don't, you know. So I mean, I'm sure people are kind of feeling a little weird about that, but it wasn't like if you're spending that much ETH on a project and you're buying eight pictures of a fucking tweet for three ETH each. Maybe you should have a little bit of prerequisite knowledge in the space before you go doing that. Yeah, I mean, it's so easily parted. I, I um, agree. And like, I, I agree with a, a bunch of the points you made, you know, the one being that there was too much of these um, and, and going out there and saying like, oh, I'm I, I my my mission in life is to provide 
generational wealth to 8,888 people. Like that's, that's a bold statement. That's, that's uh, why infinitely. Supply. Exactly. No, no. And, and, and this Bitcoin is exactly even why... done that? Has Bitcoin <laughs> provided generational wealth? No, yeah, it, I suspect I, it has. And, and yeah. I, 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 no, I, I agree completely with the uh, big, long-winded, open-ended, uh, shrouded in mystery promises. Um, you know, but I will say that the utility over the past 60 days, I'll say 60 days because it's a long time in the cycle, um, has been exponentially better and better and better. And, um, you know, I'm looking forward to the Genesis 4 Cool Cats thing. Well, I'm looking forward to the next announcements coming out. And yeah, I I get it, right? Like, why would he drop a Cool Cats collab in the most bearish point of the market when when nobody really wants to buy his inner circle jobs anyway, right? You know what I mean? So it's like, yeah. he kind of had to rework a whole bunch of marketing to really go against all that FUD. And it, a lot of it was like sneaker flipper FUD. Like it was a lot of stuff that was like, I didn't get immediate, like you didn't drop something that made me 10 ETH like right away. What the fuck, man? Like, and I feel like that that's just kind of super short sighted. So, you know, for people that want to like make a quick bag, like stick to the shit. That's a quick bag. If you want to get on these like fucking 888 journey, these long winded mint passes that have like, like give them some time and give them six months. Like give them like, it's not, you know, and I, and I mean, I'm a little bit of an older perspective too. I'm not, um, I'm not sinking myself holding 11, 888 passes. Um, but we'll see where they go, dude. You know? Yeah. I'm not, like I said, I probably drank a little too much of his Kool-Aid. Um, oh, but, it's all but, good. Dude, it, but but it, I, I mean, here's, it, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. I was going to say, here's the thing, right? Like, um, and this isn't a knock on you. Like it's, it's great because you have that super low cost basis, but a lot of people like always be like, Oh, Warren Buffett makes $400 million a year on Coca-Cola dividends. Right. Well, it's, you know, that that's how much he makes now because he bought in a long, long time ago um, and has kept his position through that entire time, which is which is amazing. Right. So you have that low cost basis and compared to your cost basis, this pay thing is, you know, paying off in spades, not only for the appreciation that it's gone through, but also just the the rewards that you've gotten out of it. So I think that that's fantastic for you. And it's a great point that like, yeah, sure. If you paid the hundred thousand dollars to be a part of that membership at its peak, um, you know, you're probably not, not feeling the same way about it. So, you know, it's, um, it's, uh, it's, it's interesting to talk about, but that being said, like, you know, you're obviously pretty hyped about the, this BT announcement and what it means. Like, do you, do you have any thoughts? Yeah. Do you have any plans for that? Like, do you think, do you, do you think you're participating yeah, dude, in the burn? Well, so this is the thing is it's already definitely got my wheels turning. I was talking with free market about this last night. So the question is, is how much it pumps. The question is, is who are these remaining six announcements? How voluminous is this actually going to get for 888? I mean, fuck, dude, he could say Disney's a partner at the end. And like, what would that do? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, there could be, sure. Um, so, I mean, I just think that like, that's already got me turning as to where I could spend these three extra passes that I have anyways on blue chip acquisition. So I think it's like something that people are obviously they're one, they're going to burn the passes. So the the 88 Genesis token will become deflationary. Whenever that happens, that's going to be huge for the baseline price. Secondly, that means that more money is going to be obviously going back towards uh, older projects, more convicted plays, which is huge and healthy. I mean, we were talking about the Clonex like thing and I, I don't keep bringing it up, but um I don't think that it was a liquidity suck, man. I think when big money comes in like Nike, I think that that was a huge infusion and you can watch all across the board, how many different um, projects are just like pumping hard right now. Um, you well, know? So yeah, I'm definitely excited about the BT drop. Apparently it's like super high end music. He was saying that it's like, this should be considered more or less some fine art. And it's, you know, think about it from like, I guess I saw, I saw a guy with like, I own a restaurant. I'm never going to have to pay for music ever again. He can just loop that shit and it's supposed to play never loop one time. It's supposed to have a chord. And I don't know, man, I'm not, I'm not a Grammy award winning fucking producer. I love, I love electronic music. I hope that it's something in that realm. I can, you know, I'm very excited to see what, what happens. 11.11 .11 ETH. Come on guy. That's fucking steep as shit. Um, it'll be interesting to see where that settles. But yeah, dude, I, I think that 
you know, it's, it's, it's definitely that there's a lot of ETH tied up right in those passes it's definitely going to loosen up some liquid and it's definitely going to mean a lot. Like I'm looking at probably either getting my mutant back because I recently traded my mutant for uh Neo Tokyo uh, citizenship uh, or uh, Big moves. You know, yeah. Or, or going and grabbing a, a, a clone X probably from the floor just to hold that as you know, Nike is, mm-hmm. you know, something I like to support. So I, I just, that's kind of where all that, all that stems from this BT burn, believe it or not, you know, that's going to be pretty, that's going to shift a lot of people's liquid. Uh, I want you to say something you said again louder for the people in the back. Clonex was the opposite of Mecca. All right. And a big shout out to Dylan, who took shit for two months with people calling Clonex Mecca. Not no, only was 100%. this the opposite. Yeah. And not only was this the opposite, this has injected more money into the <clears throat> NFT market than any other project in fucking history. Do you know uh, how many people have hit me up on a very professional level? And I don't answer my phone often, believe it or not. I, I really don't. How many people have hit me up? Yo, who did Nike buy? What's Nike buying? Nike mm-hmm. bought something? What is Nike doing? You know all about this shit. Nike, Nike, Nike. Bro, you guys have to understand. Like, Nike, okay, from a from an ethical standpoint and from a business standpoint, Nike is the number one distributor of like pretty much all sportswear, athleticism wear. And then under Nike for like number two is like the brand. Uh, well, number three is like Skechers, right? Skechers and whoever owns those companies. Like there's a lot of like Walmart type shoes. But number two underneath all of that is Nike's resellers. They make more money than... Uh, <laughs> Number three company makes gross, like, wow, ever. So, so you have to understand how much dynamic this really shifts, uh, you know, from a reselling and from a cultural perspective. It's it's not it's not small. You know, I I'm still in shock. Being, I, well, could, yeah. I could I could see Clonex floor being ten easily in the next, and that's just because of the acquisition from higher end people realizing what's happened. You free market said it's going to take fucking like weeks for people to even really gather this data i mean i guess figure out how to buy a clone x i guess it's inevitable that we shifted back back to the clone x because (laughs) no and i'm not saying that like in in a bad way like it's just the it's it's such a big conversation um but the bigger plays these are the bigger plays not excuse me but this is like these are the bigger movements in liquidity that also shape the entirety of the the space you, you so just, these are the, you the know. thing about uh like a clone x where the floor is you know six seven eighty uh the vials are going up and up and up like is it actually a liquidity suck when more than half of these were sold pre-sale for 0.05 no i think it's more of a transfer of wealth it, from some yeah. of the largest holders in the space into the smaller holders in the space or you know the mid-size holders that you know had the few o's for nine months or what however long they've been out for and you know this just worked out really really well for them and yeah you know when All the when, that- well, when the floor is 10 eth on something let's just face it they uh, most of the market is priced out of that it just 100%. is what it is. So it's not sucking the liquidity out of all of the people that are buying, you know, the 0.02 projects, the 0.05 projects. It's giving them more liquidity because no, it's 100% stimulating like a lower. T- so it's it's a progression. It's absolutely 100% lo- stimulating a lower tier, not to be that in a derogatory sense, but a lower no, tier sure. of, of, of people that are holding liquidity that are more convicted in the space. Mecca Think about was with Tropics. You, you know, that was that was a rug, bro. That was a rug with metadata leaks and hardcore issues like that. We we can't you can't even really compare. What was like, you really can't? Yeah, yeah Mecca. 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 Oh, Mecca. Oh, yo, yo, he said Tropics. I thought. <laughs> Sorry. No, 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 no. What I was yeah. going to say. What I was going to say about him is is imagine what that type oh. of kid will will go do. Yeah. With with nine or ten clone X's liquid, he's going to stimulate the NFT space as best as possible that's what i do from like a community standpoint all i try to do is like stimulate positive uh you know positivity help people get bags and promote safety because nobody likes to get scammed that does not help the fucking space at all like that you know so like those are the aspects but from a from a liquidity standpoint clone x was huge that just pumped so, so many people's bags that didn't even ever even have a bag now that just goes and trickles down on hope. 
Uh, Mecca, Mecca created, yeah, Mecca created money that wasn't there. Uh, Clonex transferred money that was, and we're seeing that. Uh, we're seeing these effects now over these last few days, and I think it's going to increase. I really do think we've entered the next bull leg uh, of this market. Cool, man. One hundred percent, guys. You guys have a great morning. I just wanted to touch base with you. Cheers. Love uh, it. You know, take care. Love you guys both. But. Have yeah, you thank you, Venom. Fabulous talk and great points. And you practically made me bullish on 888. So I really appreciate <laughs> that. <inner. laughs> I really appreciate the inner circle perspective there. All you have to do is look at something and free markets bullish on it right now. That's how <laughs> bullish he's gotten. It's just like, you I'm get some ETH. That. You get some ETH. I'm buying everything. Uh, <laughs> Fry Lemon, what's going on? What is up, bro? What up? Great, man. How are you? Sipping my lemonade, uh, getting some <laughs> lemon shortcake. Feeling good. Lemon. You're loving it, eh? Yeah. Yeah, I was uh, trying to pick up some more lemons last night, and then I just saw um, Pranksy uh, tweet did this thing that everybody, a lot of people in Alpha Moon jump on, the Midnight Breeze. Ah. I just thought it was cool art and, you know, for Banner, and then Four went from 0.02 to 0.09 at a point. Right now, 0.08. So that's something that you know we could briefly talk about. Um, what are some implications when somebody drops that? You guys think there's future value? Should the other alpha men be, you know, keeping an eye on it for the near future, or it's already done? I like what they did with those. I'm trying to just pull it up on uh, OpenSea while I'm talking here, so just forgive me. Um, but uh, what they did with uh, making a a banner NFT was kind of cool because I think it's probably a uh, um, underserved element in in nfts right like everybody wants to rock the profile pictures and we talked about you know malavita doing the the ring around the profile picture we actually have one for alpha mint too we should uh we should all get back on that train and put them on our profile pictures but uh yeah putting them in the the you know in the the banner realm like having it at the top of your open sea i've seen some people have it at the top of their their discord profile like that's pretty cool and um I'm wondering if it starts out like maybe a mini side trend of just having more of these pop up too. But uh, for those of you that haven't seen it, I did manage to pull it up. And, uh, you know, if you're watching on YouTube or plan on watching on YouTube, you'll be able to see it. But these things look uh, fucking cool, man. It's just like um, a little almost like dystopian building you know with a background with some clouds or dragons in the back. I don't know. I fucking love them. Yeah. The, the yeah. vibes are dope. Yeah, Japan inspired, anime inspired. They they look absolutely fabulous. And I'll say this: forget metaverse land. The most undervalued real estate in all of NFTs is the Twitter banner. I think that um, Twitter, yeah, perfect. Using, yeah, I think that using the Twitter banner to display more of your NFTs. I think eventually Twitter is going to come up with a way to verify each NFT in your banner. And as we know, you know, your PFP limits you to one one sort of outfit a day, if you will. But that banner is just really, really untapped real estate. Of course, many NFT people are using it properly now, but I think that trend's going to intensify. Uh, yeah, there, and there was yeah. definitely a little bit of a run on these i remember seeing the uh the moon lounge going pretty crazy just sharing a whole bunch of them that weren't even theirs yeah and i saw the you know the highest sale was 1.5 eth so nothing that got too out of control here but damn it is uh it is a hot looking banner did you end up picking one up fry yeah i got a few a few days ago when it was low and then you know just take some off the floor and flipped it i was just wondering because I've I have not experienced, you know, if Pranksy tweets something like, does it goes on for a few days or it just pops for a day and then drops? Um, I was more wondering about that and see if I should flip more. Well, I can speak and to that. Way, they're gonna drop a 3D version to your wallet so you can use it as like a video or something, and and all the dragon stuff will move. So I thought that would be. Cool. Yeah. Um. So. 
I the I had a very very uh, I was obsessed with a collection called Legend Maps, which you guys heard me talk about a lot, and it was a very underhyped, underexposed project that took over twenty four hours to mint out. It was minting very slowly. I was in the pre sale. I minted mine, uh, and then on the second day. All of a sudden, early in the morning, Pranksy jumps into the Legend Maps room, and with one message, he says, this looks cool. And then all of a sudden, the, the Pranksy sweep began. They ended up getting from 0.09 at the time up to 0.4, and they're sitting right now around 0.09 again. So I hope that answers your question that any of these influencer pumps tend to be short-lived at the same time if you see the size of position he took that he hasn't sold any it it's it's what indicates to me that it's long-term bullish but if your strategy is trading you're going to want to sell into that influencer pump almost every time ah uh, sorry dude having a bit of a hard time hearing you right now no i said thank you that answers it and uh, have a good day all right. Thank you, Fry. Perfect. Oh, my Discord's right. frozen. We got uh, Pass with his hand up. Can you hear me all right? Pass. Can you hear me? Uh, yeah, you may have cut out for a second. You sound good now. Yeah, my Discord is just uh, not, per not cooperating with me right now. Cass, GM, how are you? GM, um, I'm okay. How are you guys? Yeah, doing all right. Pretty great. Good, good. Um, just a quick question, really. Um, and it's something that's been playing on my mind a little bit, really, over the past 24 hours. Um, do you believe, and this goes out to anyone, really, do you guys believe that the valuation of a project or valuation on an NFT is based on fundamentals and fundamentals and tokenomics and financial gain? Or do you think the value of the NFT or the project is dependent on the community? I personally always felt that it's the community what I purchase into, or the art, if it's art that I'm after. Um, I just wanted to get your guys' take on it, really, on on that. Yeah, I mean, it's that's it's a hard question to ask because you know one of one of the questions that I get asked a lot from people who don't really participate in NFTs, you know, when I, when I talk about what I do or like the you know the, the space that I'm involved in is just like, well, what makes something valuable, right? Um, and that's such a it's such a hard question to ask. Now, there's obviously a couple of different camps and, and people who have different trading styles or different investment styles. Right. Uh, some are more short term oriented. Some are more long term oriented. I think if uh, you look at projects that are able to build commu like long standing communities that um, those are the ones that typically tend to do the best long term, um, you know, they 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 kind of suck people into it. They buy into the culture and the, the belief of it. One of the things that Bored Apes has done kind of second to none. Um, but short term, it can definitely be a little bit of a crapshoot. There's there's definitely a lot of people that are for the, the short term financial gain aspect of it. So, um, yeah, I, I mean, I got to believe that this space is is heavy into the, the financial gain element of it right now. I... I believe markets are the same when it comes to price. And while there are obviously intricacies in each asset class, when it comes to price, short-term price action is always driven by market mechanics, which is best captured through what's known as technical analysis. And long-term price action is best captured through fundamental analysis and is decided by fundamentals. So it's it's the answer is both and yes and there are certainly factors uh, even beyond those two generalizations uh to consider when analyzing this point so i think that uh obviously 
you're buying, you know, I talk about teams and because I think at the core of a good community is a great team. So just like if you're investing in a company, you want to know that the executive board is great. Uh, I think a lot of the value in an NFT comes from how your holders perceive the team. I perceive the Kaiju team as extremely competent with a fabulous roadmap who gets the industry. So I'm willing to continue to invest in them even when they pull back. That's where I believe the long-term value is. Short-term, all price is controlled by mechanics, which is, again, best captured through technical analysis, like classic TA or harmonics or wave theory or whatever one uses. No, that's, that's, that's great. That's, that's, that's actually a really in-depth answer from both of you. That's really cool. Um, on, a, on, a, on, a, on a slightly different note, um, in terms of, uh, is it Tezuka fragments? Fragments of Tezuka, I think it is. Yes. Um, I, I keep feeling that I miss the jumping on it because like it went down to 0 0.414 this morning and I was like, oh my God, should I jump in now? I'll wait I, until I, I to see. All right. All cards then, on the table. The person who keeps buying them when they get down there may be on this show right now. Uh, no, I've noticed that because I've checked their I've, I've checked their wallets and I, I kind of know who's <laughs> doing it. <laughs> I love them. I, the, here's my philosophy. They're each 800 by 800. I want them in a poster on my wall, so I probably am going to need quite a few to make the grid uh, good looking if I if I turn them into a poster. So. This is a great story and a great play and just saw the entire range of possibilities and emotions happen to it in 24 hours, right? Came out of nowhere, almost a stealth drop, minted 0.08, got almost to one ETH within 30 minutes or an hour of the mint selling out, website crashing, intense demand. We saw some big collectors pick up ones they want, but then we saw a bunch of traders rush in, get the price ahead of itself, and it's collapsed. A lot of times, if you look at that floor, it's people who bought at 0.4 or above selling for a loss. These are generative. Some of them are rarer than others, which has taken me a few days to learn as I dove into the collection. There are some squares that are just not common. Those tend to be priced at 0.3 or 0.4 uh, above the floor, but... You know, general thesis here, this is an iconic artist. This is his official collection and an aesthetic that really speaks to collectors in this space. I'm wildly bullish on it. I, I don't, you know, they, they routinely get down to 0 0.14, 0 0.15. They're at 0 0.2 right now. So maybe you don't rush and go by, just maybe keep an eye on it. But as a long-term play, these, these really hit me in the right spot. Uh, I, I felt that because I'm a massive anime fan. Absolutely yeah. massive anime fan, and um, I think the one I've got my eye on is you know the one where um, Astro Boy and and I'm kicking myself because I didn't buy it yesterday, where Astro Boy is walking um with like an army behind him. Yes, 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 I have one. Yeah, fat. I think the that that's the one I want because that's the oldest. I think that's Volume One, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Oh, is it? I uh, see you. You you may have some really good insight on this collection that I would love to pick your brain on too, because I'm not as deep into the uh, history of it. Oh, it's on the website. It's on the website. Just check the oh. website. <laughs> it's on the website, moron. Okay, no, cool. Thank you. Uh, I'll go check it out. Yeah. yeah sorry, guys. And um, great yeah. show as usual. And um, thank you, man. Really appreciate the the question. Love that collection. Oh my god, I had my mic muted. What the fuck? You were talking the whole time, huh? No, not the whole time, but just at the end. I was just poking fun at your uh, your diligence. <laughs> like, I, I was, I was like, I it and he's like, it's on the website, man. Like, you I didn't, can't believe didn't even R2 look at the website. I had to call myself a moron. Where were you? No, I, I was screaming at the microphone. <laughs> I promise. I, I will never miss that opportunity. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I'll see you guys tomorrow morning. Yeah, you got it, Cass. All Thanks right, again. Cass, thank you. Take care. Oh, he switched back to his standard Shroom Heads profile. Might get the, the, the cane out and just take him right off the stage. <laughs> oh, GM, GM. Yeah, I've got to get those Discord Nitros so I can do different ones. I just needed it for one of my other Discords. Oh, oh so yeah. That's how you do it, right? I didn't realize it was a Nitro uh, yeah, thing the, to be the, able to do your... The room-specific profiles. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. 
yep, yep, yep. I, I so I had to switch back yesterday. I feel a little feel a little icky over here. A little it's dirty. Like, yeah. uh, lemon PFP man. Oof. They are <laughs> looking right. hot. Well, hey guys. GM. Yeah. Um so questions. I was just wondering we were talking a little bit about community earlier, building community and how community is something that really strong drives value in a lot of these projects and i know like personally as somebody with my own projects small discord like building community and getting people engaged and doing all that is it's really hard man like it's it's a challenge it is not an easy thing to overcome and i'm i'm just super curious to hear what you guys think like what you picked up over your time in nfts about what is working what kind of defines these good communities and like what are the actual tactics people are using to build these communities and keep people engaged all right so we all know this is like the big question what's the secret sauce to a community it's something i analyze every day and just i you know i'm in a bunch of them i try to see what works there and this is not a complete answer but this was just kind of a bit of a revelation i had the other day if a viral moment, and I was inspired by the ban Rajesh meme uh, in Ronin Cats, if you guys haven't uh, seen that Discord, but a viral moment really creates a core group of users in your community that's pretty sticky. So I know it can't be manufactured and it wouldn't be contrived or something you planned, but as a creator, I would be aware that your viral moment should be something you lean into extremely hard. Don't let it be a flash in the pan. If you saw what Ronin Cats did, they actually made a room called When Ban Rajesh, right? And I don't do much in the Ronin Cats Discord except drop in there every once in a while and say, When? When Ban Rajesh? And it's just fun. It, it created a little moment. And I think each Discord can have something like that, even if it's not a huge viral thing. So that's just a little thing I noticed the other day. Maybe Cobain has some uh, some thoughts too. Uh, yeah, and I actually believe that this is something that you've said in the past too. And I mean, it, it it shouldn't be all about the money, but like nothing binds a group of people together than getting rich together too. Um, like, you know, if the project just has that like je ne sais quoi um, and really kind of just takes off in the, in the greater market, you know, you have the long-term convicted holders uh, that have been supporting it and feel very vindicated in the fact that their convictions are paying off. And uh, I mean, you've created somebody that's a, a potentially a lifelong holder. You have a lot of those, again, going back to the apes, um, a lot of those who's, you know, a large, large, large portion of their net worth is probably being held in uh, one or multiple board ape JPEGs. And they just, they, they don't want to sell it. And, you know, rightfully so. It's, it's part of their identity and their community. And this is a great point. And also something else you can't necessarily force like a viral moment, right? But what you can do as a project creator is manage your floor, right? Your roadmap shouldn't be something that you dangle to get people into initial sales. It should be something you use to manage your floor price so that there's never too much of a drawdown as your collection loses steam. I mean, no collect, and look at Kaiju arguably the hypest drop of the year that people were anticipating dead for over a month you know no one's there it's it's quiet people think it's dead oh the price is lower than it's ever been etc cetera, etc cetera. so managing your floor price by using your roadmap and not letting it out early is one way you can capture the well let's keep everybody rich and 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 try to focus on it that way yeah, I, you know what, actually, I'm listening to this conversation right now and, and talking about it. And, you know, it's it's one of the reasons why I think Alphaman is uh, such a strong community, too. And not not so much just the getting rich together factor, um, but like actually just celebrating the, the wins and the losses together. Right. Like you create this like um, this group of people who all have the same kind of temperament and the alignment and whatnot. Um, yeah. And you, 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 you go through the trials and tribulations together and, uh, you definitely create a bond with a lot of these people, whether it's on the winning side or the losing side, you know, you, you end up with these people that you've, you've got their back and you know that they've got, um, yours, 
Uh, and, you know, we were talking yesterday and during that interview about the ether orcs, about how, you know, there was, we were, we were trusting people in this community with, uh, you know, three, four, five hundred thousand dollars of assets to manage them properly. And it all kind of just works. Right. So, um, yeah, there's definitely needs to be like a binding factor, uh, and, and, a kind of a central core theme to the community that just kind of gives everyone a rallying point. Um, and, and sometimes that's as simple as just great art too, right? Great music fans of, of bands have that, right? Like you see those bands with rabid communities and fan bases where people travel all over the world together and do meetups to go at concerts. And, um, yeah, sometimes it's just, it's just art. Well said, sir. Love it. Love it. Well, I, you know, I really appreciate it. And it's one of those interesting things. I think viral moments are huge. Um, and playing into those viral moments, it can be tricky, but like keeping that momentum going is really, really valuable. But yeah, I think there is, I think a part of community here is directly linked to people getting those like financial wins. You know what I mean? Like that is unfortunately the reality is this will be a speculative space for a long time, like a speculative investment space. And, you know, when people are earning money, they're happy here. And I think that's kind of true across the board, you know? Well, I mean, like, you know, it's kind of funny, like in free market can kind of like get on board with this, but like the poker community was a very, very large community. Right. And the, the fact about poker was that I, I think maybe about, 10% of people are actually winners. Maybe another 10% of them break even over a long time and 80% of them kind of lose. But, uh, um, you know, the, the ones that lost even just little amounts kind of always stuck around too, because there was just a central theme of like, you know, people just enjoying the game, enjoying talking about it, enjoying thinking about it and stuff like that. And I think there's an element of that in NFTs as well. Like you don't, it doesn't always have to be about the winning. Like you said, people are obviously happier when they're making money. There's uh there's no question about that too. But um, you know, there's so there's, there's a, a process. Here is a pro tip. If you do know a professional poker player in your life, he does not want to hear your bad beat stories. He's seen it <laughs> six thousand times and it had worse, no doubt. Him. There is no hand that will shock him. And you can keep those to yourself. Whereas in NFTs, we want to hear. We we love. We're friends. Good morning. We're gonna make it. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, yeah. Poker is one of those weird anomalies where people always remember the losers more than they do the winners. Always, always. Yeah. Unless you win the World Series, that's the only one that sticks in your head uh, above the rest. Yeah. Are we playing in that next year? What's going on? Are we oh, doing fuck this? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh, 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 oh. I've piqued his World interest. Series? All right. Um, Josh, anything else you wanted to talk about? Oh, well, that's all I got right now, guys. All you got Great now. listening to you this morning. Have a good one and uh, sending you all those dope citrus vibes. Dope citrus Just vibes. Our power. That's the, uh, the hashtag for anyone out there who wants to get on those Twitter raids. It's a sour power. Sour power. Love it. Sour power um all right anything you want to uh finish us off with here free market um i wanted to mention a drop okay let me reach my brain because oh, i forget speaking of it while you're thinking about it x copy is going to be happening um soon i want to pull up the website real quick almost forgot about grifters drop um but those things are, uh, yeah, four hours and five minutes from now. So we are looking at 3 p.m. Eastern. There's 270 of them remaining. Uh, mint price 0.25. And I think that we are going to see a gas war on that one. Mm hmm. Yeah, that. Oh, I mean, that's going to be the gas war to end all gas wars. It's the most desirable artist with a 300 supply. It's a, I wouldn't even attempt that for 99.9% .9 of people. I would um, suspect that that is and going to end up costing you multiple ETH to mint it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, don't. I, I really would not even try. I think the one thing I just wanted to shout out was Nuclear Nerds, because this happened mm. kind of late and came out of nowhere and was quite the cook. Um, a lot of AM members got in it. I don't know if they revealed um but yeah it was a very popular one that a lot of people got into so nuclear nerds uh 
is uh, is a big one. So go check that one out. I know a lot of people own them. It looked pretty cool. The art was the art was fun and, and kind of unique, uh, different than stuff we had already seen. That, I think that's why it did well. Yeah, um, I, I definitely want to check that out. I saw it pop up, but didn't have a chance to look at it. Um, just for a little bit of context for the grifters, the lowest sale on these has been six ETH. Oh, my God. So incredible. Uh, proceed with caution for sure. One, but... one last note for all of our Moon Lounge members. I want to I want to do a big shout out to Jake Udell. Uh, the homie over at Metalink, who threw us 20 whitelist spots to an upcoming drop, Cool Man's Universe. I think this is one of the more anticipated drops of the week. If you are a Moon Lounge men member, please head over to the Moon Raffles room and enter that raffle, which ends in about 25 minutes. Uh, I'm going to be collecting the winner's wallets afterwards and sending them over to Jake so he can get them to cool man but yeah that's that's going to be a very anticipated drop so go enter that raffle giveaway if you have not that is for moon lounge members only perfect yeah that's really exciting i'm um, looking forward to that drop and appreciate that from jake um yeah i think on that note we should be able to wrap it up uh but an hour and 20 minute episode nothing wrong with that and i'm pleasantly surprised to say we did not talk about uh Clonex or Lemons in too great of detail. Obviously, it came up a couple times, but look at us. Go us. Love Lemons. Love <laughs> oh, lemons. there it is. All right. Say, say your line and we'll be on our way. Good luck at the tables, DJ. Yeah, good luck, guys. Have a, have a great afternoon, and we will, be, uh, we will be doing this again at 930 tomorrow. Thank you so much.